everyone, welcome to today's episode of Frightfully Forgotten. And we're gonna do another slasher film. Yeah, or slasher crazy. Yeah, yeah. we didn't realize <laughs> when we put this in the last batch of movies together that they're all like 80s type slasher flicks, but that's just the way it rolls, so that's why we're gonna do it. 1988's Hide and Go Shriek. I think this one, um, I'm, I'm happy we're doing this one because it really suits the whole purpose of our channel. Right, yeah, this is a very forgotten film. Yeah. It is directed by Skip Schoolnick. Is that his real fucking name? <laughs> this could, could be fake, who, who knows? knows? Yeah, right. he was more of a producer. He's a producer in Walking Dead. And he also produced the Kung Fu Made for TV movie, <laughs> starring David Carradine and a very young Brandon Lee. <laughs> it stars Sean Cannon. That's Mike Barnes from Karate Kid 3, <laughs> that fucking asshole. <laughs> Your karate is shit, LaRusso. <laughs> He's also in tons of soap operas. He's got that soap yeah, opera yeah, that, look, right? That, that pretty boy pretty look. Pretty boy chiseled. Yeah. Yeah. The movie starts out, it's very 80s. The killer getting ready, right, at, at his sink, at the vanity, and he's, yeah. like, putting on makeup, right? And it's it's a guy. But you don't see his full face. You just see nope. the eyes and the lipstick very close. But you don't see a full, you don't get a good enough idea what he looks like. Which is exactly how it should yeah. be, right? That's what you do in a horror movie. You yeah. never show the killer right off. Yeah. He ends up picking up, a uh, like, a hooker. This is the first kill. They kind of showcase his character. It sort of goes into four couples for high school graduates they want to celebrate have a big party one of the kids uh john his dad owns a furniture store let's have it in the furniture store you After know hours. like yeah exactly it sounds like a fucking blast that's exact man if one of our friends owned a fucking furniture store i can yeah. guarantee we would have probably done something like that yeah probably would have burned the fucking place <laughs> down or something yeah. it shows the uh the furniture store being closed down for the day and John's dad, who owns the store, is talking to this other schmuck. Yeah. Like, just... super 80s-looking schmuck with the <laughs> shitty half-mullet. And it turns out that John's dad has let his new shipper receiver, recently <laughs> released ex-con, live in the basement of the furniture store. The dad's excuse is like, well, there hasn't yeah. been a break-in since he's been living here. Right. Thinking that he's like, you know, almost like a night security guard at the same time. <laughs> yeah. But that other guy's like, well, wouldn't that bulletproof, undestructible glass you just installed have something to do with that? <laughs> this magic glass. <laughs> the ex-con <laughs> goes down to his, like, basement. His little layer. His little basement <laughs> layer. He's got this, like, makeup on. He's got the yeah. 80s dangly earring. And the balding skull. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Starts uh, making this nice, delicious-looking yeah. dinner. <laughs> yeah. like, like, Some good yeah. cook. He's got the like... wok going. He's got the fresh <laughs> green onions. John's dad doesn't know they're doing this. They're doing it yeah. behind his back. Yeah. They go in during the day, and they kind of hide for a bit or whatever. Bust out the beer, the, beer, and the yeah. food. And it's a great setting. Furniture store at night. And it's like, what, three, four stories? Between the showrooms and yeah. the offices... And warehouse, like it, there's so many places in here that you can utilize. Yeah, but they have a good time, right? They're drinking, they're yep. eating. The one guy's wearing sunglasses inside when the lights are off. The, the whole time, let's play hide and go seek in the furniture store, which is another. It's a, it's what probably what you do. Yeah, right? like what a great place to go play hide and go seek. <laughs> Couple of couples go off and they go to do some hanky panky. Yeah, I'm getting all freezing. There's the one virgin couple that are like, oh, should we, you know? Yeah. That's where we find out there's someone else in the store that starts picking off the kids. Yeah. That's the movie, you know? These yeah. kids being uh, picked off in this, this big giant furniture store at night with all the lights off. Fantastic setting and atmospheric, right? The killer cuts the cuts the cords, right? Yeah. Cuts the the power lines, and then or the whatever. emergency lights come on, so it's all yep. red at yep. the end. You know, the last kind of half of the movie, it's all just red. There's mannequins everywhere, yeah. in this warehouse, but um, it's creepy because the killer kind of uses that, yeah, because right? he poses in a mannequin sometimes, yeah. right? And that's fucking creepy. And I think this is the only movie I've ever seen where he kills someone. And he'll assume their clothes. Yeah. And he pretends to be the person they just killed to get closer to the other people. And it's very cool. Very cool, very smart. Yeah. I think it's the girlfriend. She learns right away when he starts acting all it's funny. It's not the boyfriend. It's, it's not him. And that 
But that person's in his clothes, right? Yeah, and then it kind of gives me chills a little bit. Yeah. That's creepy. The window scene. Right. Big display window, and they're yeah. banging on the window to get out. And it's, it? these, it's these damn windows, these new right? new windows <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. you can't break through, and it's like soundproof. There's no one on the street except for some bum. <laughs> yeah, you can't hear them, but the bum ends up actually seeing them. Yeah, he just waves. <laughs> <laughs> but then the cops pull up to give the bum shit. <laughs> yeah, and uh, they don't see the kids who are like, you yeah. know, trying, struggling to get their attention. They're this close to yeah. getting out. That close. I love that, that, that this close yeah. part. When they do catch who they think is the killer, yeah. and they end up beating them all up. They beat the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> they all boot his ribs. <laughs> The killer, he's all laughing. He's all, ah, ha, ha. And then there's an elevator shaft. <laughs> Without the elevator blocking the shaft, he's all, ah, ha, ha, and backing up. Oh, whoa! He all <laughs> falls down the shaft. <laughs> Speaking of the elevator, um, there's actually not many kills in this movie. For a slasher mm. film, body count is not that high. Yeah, but the elevator is actually a killer. But the know. elevator scene is great where there's like a woman like, chain to the top of an elevator and she's yeah. trying to get out and it's going up and she sticks her head out and yeah, it you can... fucking decapitates her, right? <laughs> and her head comes yeah. off. The music is really good in this movie. Oh yeah, during the opening sequence where he's getting ready and everything. That whole opening sequence is amazing, by the way. Like, yeah. Just the look of the killer. He doesn't look like your usual killer. He's kind of almost dressed like me. He's got... A fedora on, and he's <laughs> yeah. got like kind of like a suit coat. Kind of a normal yeah. 80s guy. Normal 80s guy is <laughs> going out and doing his thing, right? Yeah. So another really cool thing about this movie is the twist at the end, which we're not going to reveal to you, yeah. but it's a cool twist. And, and the motive behind the killings is very original. The acting isn't great. There's some really shitty acting in this movie. <laughs> yeah. But you have to look past that and realize that it is low budget. They couldn't hire fantastic actors for the budget they yeah, had. Yeah, but so. the movie was low budget. It was shot in like three weeks. Who would you recommend this movie to? I think I recommend this movie to any fan of like My Bloody Valentine. Yeah, uh, April Fool's April Day. April Fool's Day. I think. If you're a fan of the 80s in general, 80s culture, new wave, new romantic type culture, I think it's right up your alley because yeah. the killer is like, he could be Gary Newman off of the dance <laughs> album cover, totally. Cruising, if you're a fan of cruising, it's got kind of a vibe of cruising by William Friedkin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that rag? He's on the dance floor. <laughs> He's all. Yeah. And if you do like a good uh, murder mystery, yeah, it's, good it's, slasher, it's, it's, it's you know? a bit of a whodunit in a way too. So it's, it's just a great horror movie all around. Yeah. You know, it's, it's enjoyable. I yeah. I really enjoy this movie. Yeah, I think it's really underrated. It's totally forgotten. Anyone who's a fan of horror, of slashers, of eighties culture, should totally watch it. Check out Hide and Go Shriek.